Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, let's take a look at making snap fit cases for circular shapes. So thank you guys so much for commenting on this tutorial here, the easy snap fit cases. That was very particular to uh, very kind of flat edge cases like the one that's shown here. And a couple people in the comments want to find out how to kind of create this version, which I showed a little bit. It is different. There are some different techniques um, to make this. So we're going to walk through that. Um, you can see here that we kind of have that same nub where it's uh, embedded into this, the main case area. And they're already chamfered here. So that prints very well for 3D printing. And then we have a cover over here. And if we hide the case, we can take a look at the, the way this is structured here. So you can see there's a lip here and that has that indentation cut out. And there's also a little bit of room over here to accommodate for that cutout. Uh, this one was made a little bit differently with more steps. So uh, in this tour, I'm gonna show you how to do uh, pretty much this thing, but with less steps. And we'll, we'll find some new techniques along the way. So let's start with a new document. Um, I'm gonna start with a new component. Let's go ahead and call this one the enclosure circular. And we'll go ahead and make another component. Let's structure this correctly. I'm gonna say this one's the case. And I'll make another component. This one is the cover, you guessed it. Let's start with the case, so I'm gonna activate that. Now it's kind of important that we start our circular case with the center origin, right? So the cent so the circle starting in this origin here. If not, I'll show you guys how to, if you draw something like over here away, I'll show you how to uh, create the, the features and stuff uh, with that. But let's go ahead and start off with um, saying we wanna start in the center. So I'm gonna draw on the, on the top uh, plane here and I'll start with my circle. Um, let's say we want a 50 millimeter diameter case. So I sketch that out. I'll go ahead and extrude that. And let's make it something like that. Uh, I'll make this into a shell by selecting that surface, right click, shell. I'll put in my thickness here, 1.5 is what I like to use. All right, so now we have our, our kind of very basic circular case. We wanna add those mobs. Um, since it's circular, it kind of doesn't matter if it's over here and over here, over there and over there. There are lots of different options. So what I'm going to do is I need to find out where um, where the center is um, plane. So we're going to look at it from this angle, right? So I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to click on this origin over here. So we're looking at it straight away like that, right? So I need a reference point to say where my nub is going to start. Well, I want it to start on the inside of the case. So I'm gonna select that edge and I'm gonna project that in, I'm gonna hit P. And what you notice is that Fusion will actually flatten it out and make it a 2D shape. So if I hide the solid by drinking down over here, turning off the solid, and I rotate around, you see that it's not a circle, it is just a 2D line, so it's flat. That works pretty well for, for this case. So what I'm gonna do is let me turn it on just to remember where I am. So I want the nub to kind of draw out this way over here. And instead of drawing a, a basic rectangle, we're actually gonna go ahead and draw a triangle so that we don't actually have to make any chamfers. It's kind of already built in. So I'm gonna hide this and I'll, I'll bring out the line tool and I'll look at it straight on and I'll start drawing my triangle. So my triangle is gonna be something like this, maybe over here and over there. Now there's a lot of degrees of freedom here and I need this to be a perfect triangle. So what I'm gonna do is use my line tool. And what I like, the you can toggle between uh, a regular line like this. And if you press the X key, you're in the mode where you create nothing but um, these construction lines. And that's very helpful because it doesn't intersect our shape. So let's go ahead and bring out the line tool, toggle that, um, that mode on, which is over here to make construction line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll over until I hit that midpoint, click on that midpoint, select that construction line, and then make it a horizontal uh, rule. So it's always horizontal. Now I can start applying some dimensions. So I need this to be about two millimeters tall, and this needs to be one millimeter uh, kind of wide, right? Or long, <laughs> whatever, wide or long. Depends on where you're looking at it, right? But now we have fleshed out a triangle that is uh, two millimeters tall and uh, one millimeter wide, I guess, yeah. And if we rotate around it, you can see that, yeah, we're still 2D. So what we're gonna do is now that we have our triangle kind of nub, we need to extrude it out and follow it along this curve. The best way to do that, easiest way to do that, is to use a sweep, right? So I'm gonna hit uh, this, the model sketch toolbox and type in sweep. My profile is going to be this guy and 
I'm going to leave it as a single path type. I'm going to select the path. The path is going to be, it can actually be anything. It, it, it can, well, it has to be the circle, of course, right? But all of these circles will work just fine, but I'm going to work on this one here. So let's click that. And automatically, um, the, the sweep will sweep along the entire path. This could be really helpful if you have something that really needs a lot of strength. But if you have a enclosure that you want to be able to open in and out without too much fuss, we can turn these distance, you get actually, you get two distance. So I'm going to put 0 0.05 and, and I'll do that on the bottom here as well. So 0 0.05 for the distance. And you'll see that you have these two little arrows that you can kind of play with. You see as you move them, you're sweeping along that path and our number is changing here. So you can make this as, as, uh, as wide or as long as you want to follow that path. Um, but the, the one thing you have to know is that there's no exact measurements here. I'm not, I'm not getting millimeters or inches. It's just uh, kind of by percentage base, like 100% would be uh, 1.0 and half of that would be 0 0.5 and half of, of half would be, well, 0 0.05. So I kind of found that uh, useful there. So I just need a little bit of a nub there. So that's how much I'm going to do. So uh, the operation is set to uh, join. I have the orientation set to perpendicular, perpendicular, which is fine. And I hit OK. So now I got that. So we got our first nub, it's already chamfered. We don't have to do too much to it. So that's really cool. And now I need to kind of mirror this over here. Well, since we created this circle in the center of our grid, I could just turn on the origins over here. We actually have three origins because every component gets its own origin. So let's go ahead and turn on the case origin, turn that on. And now I can use uh, this any of these faces that are in the origin uh, to create our mirror. So let's go ahead and bring out our mirror. Say I want the mirror. I'm going to change uh, or make sure that the pattern type is set to features because I'm just going to select the sweep down here in the timeline as the feature. And then that's my object. Now I need a mirror plane. I'm just going to select on this guy over here. And you get a little ghosted view. We'll rotate around until we see it. There it is. I'll hit OK. And we got ourselves a mirrored <laughs> nub. So that works well. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and make the... Uh, the case, right? So I'm going to um, highlight this guy over here, turn on, activate that cover component. And now I'm going to select the top edge here and I'm going to project that into its own sketch. I have it selected and I'll create the sketch there. So now I have that. Now it's referenced. So what I'll do is I'll hit stop sketch. I'll select these two profiles and I will extrude this out to about one and a half millimeters. There's my cover. I'm going to look at it from underneath and I'll hide the case so I can work with this. And I'm going to make uh, I'm going to project this bottom surface into its own sketch. So I have it selected, hit the sketch button. Now I'm going to use the offset tool, which uh, you can find, or you can just hit the O key for the hotkey. And I'll click on that outer edge here. Now I can bring this inward. I'm going to bring this inward to 1.7, and that's going to give me a little bit of extra tolerance. I know the thickness is 1.5, but if you add 0 0.2 to that, it'll turn out to be um, you know, 1.7. Uh, so now I have this thing. So now I can select this inner circle, bring it out to two millimeters because that's the height of our nub. And I'll hit enter. And now what I need to do is, unfortunately, I can't use the sketch um, from that, that created the nub. I have to kind of create my own sketch because there's no way to kind of offset that or tell it to go, hey, start from this curve because it's a curve and not a flat surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch and make sure that I, I understand where the nub is. So the nub um, is over on this side here. So I'm going to click on that edge, hopefully. If I click and drag, I can probably select that face there. There you go. That's what I want, that one. So now I have, um, so now I'm looking at it straight away, a lot like we did the first case. And now I need to project this sketch in here. So where the cut's going to happen is actually right around here. So I'm going to project that in, or we could select this one at the bottom. It really doesn't matter. So I'll select that one and hit P on my keyboard. Again, I get this 2D line that um, gives a good reference point of where the thing needs to start. So now I can um, hide the body, and then we can create our, our little nub here. It's going to be a cut. So I'll click here, and I wish there was a kind of a faster way to do this. Um, but this seems to be the best way that I know how to do it. If anyone knows a better way to create a triangle that's like perfect and easy to make, let me know. Um, so this is going to be one millimeter here, and this one's going to be two millimeters here. And there is our perfect fully defined um, triangle. So now I can select that and do my sweep. 
Um, that is the profile. I just need to select the path. Let's go ahead and turn on the cover again. We're going to select this edge here or this edge as the sweep. Now, uh, by default, of course, it wants to cut the whole thing. We run around the whole path as 1.0. But I'm going to change this to, again, 0 0.05 and this one at 0 0.05 as well. But I'm actually going to add one unit to that. I'm going to make it 0 0.05 or 0, 06 so that I have a little bit more because I, I don't want this edge to be completely you know touching the other edge I want a little bit of tolerance right so that's why I added that uh, that extra 0 0.01 to that so I'll hit okay that's a cut that's working well now I need to mirror that cut and again because we're centered with the grid we could just turn on our origin and use this face to do that mirror for us so let's go ahead and mirror this out I'll hit mirror Features is still selected. I'll select the sweep at the bottom and mirror plane will be this guy over here. Roll over there and there it is. Sweet, so now we have our two uh, cutouts here. And then I'm gonna select this surface here and create a shell, 1.5. Okay, cool. Fusion is smart enough to kind of um, shell around this nub area or this indentation area. So you get that kind of um, complex looking uh, surfaces there. So that's pretty much it. Now if I turn on the case and turn on the entire enclosure, I can do a cross-section analysis. So I'm gonna use the cross-section analysis to make a cross-section. Now I don't see it here because I gotta kind of rotate it around. And now I can hit okay. Now you can see that we got our curved nub on the case and our lip with that feature indentation here in the, in the, in the cover here. We got that tolerances in there, that little bit of gap, 0 0.2. And, and of course, if you want to add per user parameters, you can do that as well to make this all parametrics. Let's go make a new user parameter. Let's call it diameter, <laughs> diameter. And let's make it 50, hit okay, hit okay. And if I go to the very first sketch, it's already set to 50, but I'm still gonna set it to diameter, hit okay. And now what we can do is play around with the dia diameter, <laughs> make it a little bit bigger if you want, maybe 70, Hit enter and you'll notice that it all uh, just grows with it. Let me turn off that section analysis uh, and then you can look at, uh, let's, let's say the case here. So you can see that. Now the width of it grows too, uh, uh, I guess, because it's not a fixed number. The sweep doesn't have a fixed number. It has more like a percentage type thing. So we can go really small. So let's go 40. You can see it's, it's, it got even shorter. Let's go really, really small, 10. Will it break? Holy jeez, look how small it is. <laughs> I didn't think that would work, but it kind of worked. Um, so however small you want to go, I guess you can go pretty small. You can go pretty big too. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously if you want more of the sweep, you can just go back into the sweep and modify uh, this. Maybe you even want to make that into a user parameter so you can drive all of them without having to change uh, two sweeps. So it's just two sweeps, two mirrors, uh, and quite a handful of sketches. Uh, I'm still looking for a way to uh, make this uh, easier, obviously. I, I'm, I'm down with that. So if anyone has any, any clues to that, let me know. Um, one other thing is I kind of want to add a chamfer here. Not really a chamfer, more, more of a drafted angle so that this edge would kind of come in more this way. Not sure if that's too necessary, um, but that is something that um, you could do with some drafts. It's, it, it wasn't working for me, so that's why I'm not going to attempt to show it. Now, the next thing I want to show is, well, what if you have a circle that's not in the center of your origins, you have, of your grid, really, if you have something out here? A little bit different, so I'm just going to uh, draw it over here somewhere. So let's c create a new sketch, and we'll, we'll still be on the floor plane, but it'll be somewhere over here. The circle will be somewhere this way. So let's say... Uh, diameter right there and we'll extrude it out and we'll do a shell 1.5 and let's go ahead and make this smaller it's a little bit too big for me 50 okay all right so you'll see that we're not we're no longer in the center of the grid so what you have to do is you basically need to use a construction plane uh, the one called plane along a path right here so you can do is you can select one of these edges and Right here, you can see how it kind of goes right there. I'm going to put just zero. And it, it pretty much is the center of, or the half of this guy here. So what I can do is I can use that now to draw my nubs. So I can select that, 
plane and hit make a sketch and you'll see that that sketch will actually be in the center here i want to project in this um this edge here you hit p on my keyboard and and there you go now that you have this you obviously you know what to do you can create that um that triangle with the line tool like that i wish i knew a better way to create this triangle that was like a little bit easier i think it, it's like too many steps for me um like oh i want it to be perfectly straight but anyway you get the deal right so that is how you would do it if you are outside of your grid, your center grid. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about it. Hopefully that is useful. Um, it's definitely different. There's um, you're kind of drawing the the shape directly instead of uh, uh, yeah, extruding. So you're really replacing the extrude part of it with the uh, with the sweep command. So. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And if you have any other ideas, please let me know. If you got any cool tips and stuff, drop them in the comments. Those help me out and other people too. I'll see you guys in the next one.